out that blasted radio. I can't hear myself think. Nothing serious. It's got overheated a little. I'm stopping for a spell and giving it a rest. Yeah, this weather's tough on everything. A lot of people rather drive at night when it's hot like this. There's a gas station down the road in Cedar Creek, a couple of miles. You want me to send a tow truck? No, no, thanks. I'll manage. Okay, mister. But watch yourself on the road here. The truck start coming through pretty heavy after sundown. She overheated and split wide open on me. Hey, um, uh, you take me to town, I'll make it worth your while. Well, I just saw the sheriff there. He'd have taken you. Well, I guess he could have, but, uh, I didn't realize about the block till after he'd gone. How about it? Well, uh, my granny'd be waiting supper. Well, I guess I could take you. Okay, that's fine. I'll get our stuff, and, uh, like I said, I'll make it worth your while. Nobody around here will bother you. Okay, be just a minute. Life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm hungry, Ed. Me too. Sure, I'm going to eat pretty soon. Up there, huh? Thank you. Okay, I got it. Right. Please, I'll take it. Take it. You helped us out. I appreciate it. Well, thanks. There's no trouble, though. Thanks a lot. Yes, thanks. 
I liked your wagon. Come up here. Well, let's see now. What kind of a license plate number are we going to put on those two mules? You know, the law says we have to have a number. Yeah, my car is conked out up the road. Number is B48131, Missouri. Oh, you're a show me fella. That's right. <laughs> well, what happened to the car? Oh, we're going to have to get it pulled in. Be fixing a day or so. Trouble, trouble, toil and trouble. Yeah. Cauldron boil and cauldron bubble. <laughs> Won't have any difficulty bubbling out there today, will it? No, I guess not. Well, you're not so badly off. The garage is just across the way. Oh, that's good. What cabin are you going to put us in? Now, this cabin generally costs $6 a day. But mm -hmm. since you're having problems, I'm going to make it five. Maybe you'll want to stay around a while. It's cabin number 14. It's right across the court. Okay. You'll have plenty of time to get settled. Corey Sherman, who uh, runs the garage, is closed for supper. And knowing his appetite and his father-in-law being out of town, I'd say you could count on an hour, an hour and a half. Right, we'll work it out just fine. Well, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Call on us if we can do anything. I sure will. Thanks. you got here. Is it serious? Yeah, but uh, we'll take care of her. Marjorie, I don't know how you do it, but every time your pie tastes better than it did the time before. And that's going so. No, you folks couldn't have picked a better place to stop. This is the best food in this part of Florida. You uh, headed for Miami? Yeah. Your uh, car's across the street in the garage. Oh, no, we uh, had to leave it sitting up in the road. Uh, we had more trouble than we thought when you stopped. Oh, well, now, that's not so good. Did you talk to Corey over at the garage about hauling it in? Uh, no, he's not supposed to be back yet. Oh, that's right. Since Johnny Goody has no help. Closes up just for supper. He ought to be back about 8 o'clock. We could call him, but I don't suppose that'd do any good. Think so, Mark? Corey will be back when he gets good and ready and not before. Well, seeing it's going to take a little longer than I thought, I think I'd better run out and plant a flare by the car just to be safe. Meanwhile, if you do see Corey, tell him to get it off the road as soon as he can. Okay, hey, thanks a lot. Good night, Monitz. Good night, Skinner. See you later. That's uh, too bad about your car. Yeah. Are you, are you comfortable in your cabin? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I guess I better try to call this. Sherman, Corey Sherman. You want to use the phone? It's outside. Okay. Thanks. Now, now you wait here. Uh, Why can't we eat here, Ed? Listen, just I have to go outside and make a phone call about the car. See? And then after I make the phone call, after I make the phone call, I'm going to come in here and we're going to get the food. And then we're going to go back to the cabin, and we're going to be very comfortable there. Okay, huh? Break that, we'll fix it. 
Hey, Mutch, look, I'm a worm bird. Come on, give it back, Jake, huh? Give me one more chance, will you? You ain't got the belt for it. You ain't got what it takes. For a pebble. But you come up with a thorn. Man, it makes you see when you ain't got a gun. Yes, sir, goodbye. While there is time, you must try. Make her the memory that you'll always miss. You must kiss her goodbye. no luggage, but I've never seen him come with luggage and no car. No, I think I'm right. I think they're going to wait until after they eat. Wait? What would they want to go do that for? Because, my friend, one pleasure traditionally heightens another. Shh, baby, what are you doing here anyway? I'm checking on you, Pop. The baby sound asleep? The baby was sound asleep, lying in the middle of the living room rug. I don't know why I don't go out and hire a nursemaid for both of you. Well, I've been looking, I've been checking. Haven't I been checking? He's been checking. It's gospel truth. Mm -hmm. He lies and you swear to it. Oh, that's unjust, daughter. Perhaps I'm not welcome Oh, here. now sit down, sit down. You old roosters are quit playing I spy out here every time you get the chance. What you fail to appreciate, Marjorie, is the meaning of the human impulse to speculate. Here we are, after all, marooned in this bucolic backwater, this Sinai of the seaboard, when presto fate deems fit to reward us with a miracle of pure loveliness. <laughs> the classic and immortal beauty of female pulchritude. Oh, not that the lady is to be compared with Helen or... <laughs> the lady? Oh, Bob. Don't be too literal, daughter. Oh, do you start walking 
walking around with that awful look on your face. And not talking to me. And not looking at me either. I know it's because you're mad. And you don't have any right to be. Because I tried. Honest and truly. And I really, really did. I know, baby. I know you. <laughs> Didn't I come right away in the restaurant when you asked yeah, me? Yeah, honey, you came. Well, we don't have any, any reason to be mad at all. Oh, Ed, it's so pretty here. The ocean's so pretty, and, and everything's so quiet. And you can hear things. Even, even the people talk like, like they were whispering in church or something. And you can hear things like, like frogs and, and crickets, all kinds of things. I saw some, too. Frogs, I mean. They were hiding by those big leaves. And, and you can't even see them. And suddenly they jump, like, like they were going to jump right on your lap or something. Oh, I forgot. Here, read this. You will soon be living near a large body of water, so prepare for a sudden change that may mean much to your eventual happiness. See? Be prepared for a sudden change that may mean much to your eventual happiness. Well, why not? You said yourself, didn't you? A sign can come from any place. Oh, Ed. Let's stay here. Hi, Emily. Which one of us knows what's best? You, Ed, you always know. And what is best? Well, first of all, to mind my own business and not attract attention. From anybody? Mm-hmm. But, but with men especially. Why? Because that's how we always get in trouble and... And like what happened in the restaurant tonight? The restaurant? But that didn't have anything to do with men. That was just because of the hoop. I wanted to try the hoop. Well, you don't think that I wanted to take it away. No, honey. All I know is that something seems to happen time after time after time. It always happens when I'm never around. Come on, baby. Now, just try to get some rest now, huh? Everything's going to be all right. Oh, Ed. Honest, sometimes I love you so much. All right. I gotta go now. I gotta fix the car. Oh, you're not gonna leave me, Ed. Don't leave me. Oh, honey, baby. <sighs> you got nothing to worry about now. You got the night light on and the radio's going and I'm gonna lock the door when I go out. I'm just gonna see about fixing the car. Take care of me if I left you. Yeah, yeah, I told you it'd be okay.
Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jim. Yeah. How are you? That's right. Yeah. Fifty-five. Uh huh. Oh, seventy. Well. Yeah. Uh huh. What about uh, delivery? Three days. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, I'm much obliged to you, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. I've got a customer sitting right here in front of me. Well, how do you like it, that? Huh? Huh? Mr. Sherman, uh, you happen to need a mechanic, and I happen to be one who's low on cash. So um, I was thinking maybe the best thing for us is to try to help out each other. Now, I'm willing to stick around here four or five days. I'll take care of the trade while you go out scouting up somebody permanent. And then when the block comes in, I'll install it myself, and, um, and I'll pay you for it at cost, and we'll call it a deal. Now, uh, how's that? Is that fair? I don't know. Uh, uh, well, wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's, uh, let's at least discuss it for a second. After all, how do I know that you are a mechanic? Anybody can fix that. Hello? For where? Yes, yes, yes. Put her on. Please. Hello, Annabelle? Hello, baby. Where are you calling from? Annabelle? I thought you were you're supposed to be home tomorrow. Well, because that house is like a a, mausole a mausoleum. Yeah, all those empty rooms. Especially the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Listen, honey, please try and get home for a spell anyway, will you? Well, sure, honey, I'm glad you won. I'm proud of you, but after all, you just, you just finished playing at Dallas, and now you want... Listen, Annabelle, I know, honey. Sure, I'm proud of you, baby, but... I... Hello? Oh, Annabelle? Annabelle! <laughs> Follow J.C. Hi. Hi. Uh, no, I thought I was still talking to Annabelle. Yeah, of course I'm proud of her, yeah. Well, I'm, if, if it means that much to her, I just miss her, that's all. Oh, now, J.C., now, why would I be jealous of my own wife? Well, I know how proud you are of her. Yes, you told me. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's just that business is... Oh, no, 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 it's so-so. Uh, it's uh, yeah, the rents are still coming in. But I've got to find a mechanic to replace Johnny. Quit. Well, as a matter of fact, I uh, do have someone in mind. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, uh, listen, w uh, yes. And w will you give my love to Annabelle? I mean, as soon as she gets settled down in Jacksonville? Yes, sir. I I just think I might see it clear to go along with you. Well, that's fine, Mr. Sherman. It ought to work out good for both of us. It's a good deal. Let's shake off. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose I take the tow truck now and I pull in the car and we'll have to bother with it tomorrow. Then um, I'll go back and get some rest and I'll start in bright and early tomorrow morning. Perfect, Wilson. Okay. Perfect. You'll like it here. There's always room for one more fellow if he knows his trade. Here are the keys to the truck. Right. When you come back, maybe I'll show you a few of the tricks. Uh, you do know how to work that tow cable, don't you? Yeah, I think I can figure it out. I'll see you later.
Will you step outside, please? in with a pass key. When she screamed like that, I didn't know what to do. Next time you've got a wildcat to treat, you'd better call a vet. What happened, Doc? If you're her husband, you'd better take care of her. Well, I'd like to hear my sister's side of the story. I just reached out to give her an injection and she clawed me. Yeah, I'd like to hear her side of the story, I said. I see. Well, you'd better go in there and hear it. Out of your cabin. Go on, it's all over. Go on. You want to take it out? No, I'll have it here. Well, okay, maybe I'll have another cup of coffee before it flows out. Oh, well, no, look, I can just well take it outside if that's the case. No, don't be silly. Sit down. Well, I... No, it's all right. Sit down. about your sister, aren't you? Yeah, 
Yeah, I suppose a little. Has anything like, you know, what happened with Doc Vincent, anything like that ever happened before? Yeah, a couple of years ago. What? Well, you see, Emily's a full-grown woman, but her mind is, her mind is that of a six-year-old kid. Now, without her meaning it or without her thinking it or knowing it at all, she just, well, she just leads them on and they want to lay hands on her and she thinks they're going to hurt her. And then she turns on them wild. So a couple years ago, about two years ago, this teacher of hers back home, she drove a pair of desk shears through his hands, actually through his right hand. And by the time I got there, he'd been to the doctor, but he hadn't been to the police. And he was talking about bringing charges against Emily, talking about Emily being dangerous. But he didn't, because he's afraid of a scandal. What are you, what are you going to do about this? Well, I don't know. I'm just going to get the car fixed and then gonna move on. Just going to keep moving, that's all. I guess. Good night. reason than just that. You don't have to clean your own cabin. Why, thorough and daily cleaning of the cabins is one of the standard and outstanding services of this uh, roadside uh, home away from home. So I must admit, I'm always pleased to see the willing industry of a young homebody, <laughs> a talent all too rare and difficult to find in this mixed up generation. Thank you, Mr. What's your name? Well, for reasons that escape me at the moment, I'm called Tubbs. Mr. Albert Tubbs, Esquire, at your service. Thank you, Mr. Tubbs.
you gonna score when you can't even get in a game? <laughs> She was built. I think I have a mainstream without just lined up drooling at her. And talk about being top heavy. You know, if I wasn't a happily married man, why, uh, well, who knows? Who knows? Mr. Wilson, uh, looks like I hired myself something more than a mechanic. You didn't tell me there was a Mrs. Wilson. Very clever. You didn't ask me. Now that you have, there isn't a Mrs. Wilson. The girl happens to be my sister. Well, you can't blame me for uh, trying to judge by looks. Well, I guess her luck is mine, then. Because if uh, you had her looks, you wouldn't be working as a mechanic. That's for sure.
So then, well, she goes out and she wins down at the Riverside. So then her daddy suggests that she ought to try for the regional. And I'll be darned if she doesn't win that one, too. So I said to her, honey, look, I'm getting to be a regular golf widower. So she said, well, honey, why don't you go and find yourself an outside interest? And I said, honey, what I'm interested in, we'd both get arrested if we start doing it on the outside. No, J.C., that's her father. He practically built this town. Excuse me. Yes, sir, everybody in town knows J.C. She had an old uh, rheumatism, you know. I'll tell you, I'm mostly responsible for handling all of this real estate. That's why I'm always on the lookout for a live wire when they come to town, you know. I'm going to build a resort right here in this town. As far as local talent is concerned, good riddance. Speaking of talent, uh, what did you say that sister of yours was ailing with? I didn't. But there must be something the matter with her. A gorgeous creature like that, still living with her brother? I'll be honest with you, Mr. Wilson. One of these days, you'll have to get arrested for hoarding. Anyway, how about the three of us putting on the feedback later, huh? As long as I'm practically a golf widower, so to speak. Hey. Ourselves a bite to eat, maybe after that we'll go to a picture show, huh? Okay. <laughs> She was bushed. I bet. What do you mean? I bet she was bushed, I mean. You know, she had quite a day today. I'm going to tell you what happened. This afternoon, my baby was found missing from his bassinet. Your little sister had taken him down to the docks, had him one of those little rental dories. And she was holding him over the water, jiggling him up and down so he could see his reflection. Well, I'm sure she didn't mean anything. Oh, I don't care whether she meant any harm or not, but the tide in that cove is very treacherous. You see, one big wave could have come along, and God knows what. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sure. am I. This thing has got me half out of my mind. But look, let me get something straight from you. Maybe this is none of my business, but something is really wrong with her, isn't it? It's just what I told you. No, no, I don't mean just what you told me. I mean wrong, not right. Look, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean... I'll tell you what, you, you wait for me. I'll lock up and I'll walk back with you. Okay.
Look, I am sorry. I... No, no, you don't have to be sorry. I understand how you feel. Well, I just couldn't not have said anything. Of course you couldn't. But she wouldn't have done anything, really. She wouldn't have hurt him. Uh, I know if you knew her, but she's got more love in her. She never would have hurt your baby. But I know how you feel. And I'm the one that's sorry. I'm sorry it happened. What's your folks, Dad? Do you have any... No, Mom and Dad died five years ago in an automobile accident. Right after they died, I put Emily in a foster home. She was all right there for a while. Then she... She got to be so lonely. Well, every time I'd come there and I'd visit her, I'd look at her and I'd think she'd be much better off. I'd put her someplace where people weren't being paid, showing her love and affection. And uh, so I took her out of there, and she's been much better are since. You, are you married? No, but I certainly thought about it. And? Well, I thought that for any woman to want to take on a situation like this, she'd... Uh... Well, I don't know about that. I, I married a man I knew couldn't live very long. Now, don't get me wrong, there's no pity involved. It was just that... Well, I loved him very much. We grew up together, so when he asked me to marry him, there was no question what we would do. I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you love somebody like a, a sister or a husband or anybody, for that matter, when they're in trouble, it makes you seem to want to love them all the more. Well, I've lived with trouble all my life. My mom died so long ago, I don't even remember. Pops tried to be both mother and father to me, but really. So successful. He's all wound up with this career business. He's gonna be a big actor. But I love him. I wouldn't want him any other way. Looks to me what him, what your sister needs is to maybe stop running. And maybe you should stop running too. It's, it's getting late. I'm. I better be getting in. You must be pretty tired yourself. Good night, Mr. Wilson. My name's Ed. I sure appreciate your taking. That's, that's all right. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Ed. matter with you? Can't you see where you're going? You're fouling up my lines. What are you calling? It's not a him, it's a her. Go away. What? Go on, go away. What are you talking about? Hey, uh, look, now, I don't know what you're trying to prove, but uh, that undertow is pretty dangerous. The water's bad. And besides, you've got to put your feet on those rocks. Thank <laughs> you. 
told you to watch out. This section of the beach is dangerous. Thanks for helping me out. I was scared. Yeah. It's all right for fishing, but it's bad for anything else. Even the boats have to be careful coming through here. Are you all right now? Yes. Let's I'm go. All right. Let's go over to my house, and you can dry out there. I want you to meet my granny anyway. All right. Where's Tico? Tico? Make it me to lie down in green pastures easily. Kitty? Yeah, Granny? Who's that with you, son? Uh, uh, Granny? This is Emily. You know, the girl I was telling you about. Don't keep going on like a fool, Kitty. What's her name? Emily. I know that. What's her other name? What's your kinfolk's name, girl? Wilson. My brother Ed's my only family. We're staying home. Are you saved? Huh? Uh, Granny, Emily's not from around here. I don't she think... She ain't she... answered my question. She's saved, or ain't she? Saved? Uh-uh. She ain't. When people ain't, you can smell it about them. Fire and brimstone. The everlasting fire. Glory be to God. Amen. Stretch out your hand, girl. You hear me? Where's her hand? It's just to see what you look like, that's all. That's what she sees, with her fingers. Well, what about it, Granny? Didn't I tell you the truth about her? Kenny, you come in here now and help me get supper. You gotta help me. Don't you go gather that and all. Kenny! Kenny! You come back here, you hear me? Kenny! Lord have mercy on us. Hi, honey. Where you been? Oh, you know Mrs. Carson, don't you? No, Emily. Hello. Well, where you been? You look like you got a little wet. What happened? Oh, I found the water down at the beach. Um, Ed, I went downtown today and I picked out a dress all by myself. Your what? A dress. The lady says when it's fixed, it'll look like it's made special for me. Well, we'll talk about it a little later. Right now, I think I want to go over and get ready for supper. We're going to go to the carnival tonight. Yeah, we're going to go, and Miss Carson's going to go with us. Eight o'clock be all right? Eight o'clock be fine. Good. See you later. No operator. Mrs. Corey Sherman. See? That's right. Thank you. You're welcome. But uh, don't thank me, please. Just... Oh, I don't hire anybody these days as long as I say thank you. Or... Hello, Anna Annabelle. Oh, hello, J.C. I, I mean, Dad. Uh, yes, J.C., well, I, I wanted to speak to... What? Two under par. Well... That's fine. Uh, well, I just wonder if I can speak to Anna Bell for a few minutes. Yeah. Well, would you have her call me when she gets through? I'm at home. But because uh, business was uh, kind of slack tonight, uh, Jake, Dad, and uh, I didn't see any re Not yet, no. This guy is helping me out. He's, uh, I think, uh, if I can persuade him to stay on. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I, yeah. Yeah, J.C., I, I know about that, yes. But tonight? Oh, no, wait, J. Dad, I don't think that's necessary for me to go down there. To, just for a couple of trucks? No. I, I know. I know, I know. I know that, da Dad, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll go right on down there, Dad. Oh, you know I will, yes. Okay, but uh, would you... Tell Annabella when she finishes it to, to, to have her call me, please, huh? Yeah. 
Two under par. Okay, then. Two under par. I make a special dinner for you tonight, Mr. Corey. Anything else I can do? How do I look, Pop? Tell me I look pretty. Come on, Pop, tell me I look pretty. Now it's a mother's glass, and she and thee calls back the lovely April of her prime. Except for the earrings. You know, some men don't like earrings, Pop, it's true. Some men can't stand the sight of earrings. Would you like to hear the piece I'm rehearsing, Marge? What? Oh, Pop, just think of it. What was the day before yesterday? Only Monday. I didn't much care whether the day came or not. Boy, you never know, Pop, you never know. It's kind of frightening, supposing... Just supposing his car didn't break down, just where it did. You interrupted me, Marge. I did what? I was rehearsing. Right in the middle, you barged in without the slightest consideration. Oh, Pop, I'm sorry. Well, all right, come on now. I'm ready. Let's have it. No, there's no use. Too late now, anyway. You wouldn't want to keep Mr. Who's this waiting, would we, on my account? Well, Pop, I said I was sorry, and I am. I'm not sorry about being excited. I'm not sorry about meeting somebody. It makes me want to dress up a little bit for a change. How often is it you meet somebody makes you want to ride on a Ferris wheel? Don't fool yourself, Marjorie. That's all your Mr. Wilson does mean. Oh, Pop. I suppose you think it's so satisfying looking after you all the time. If there's anything worse than a finicky old woman, it's a finicky old man. When am I going out? When am I coming back? Prattling all day long about going on theater tours when you know very well you're never going to... It's not so! I am going! As soon as I can get the backing. With my name? Nation, what name? Fourth rate summer stock companies and fifth rate productions. Marjorie! Pop! You haven't got a name. You never have had and you never will have and you might just as well face it. Pop! Please. Oh, Pop, I'm sorry I said that. I, I didn't mean that. At... Pop. Well, maybe I won't... Maybe I won't wear these earrings after all. Pop. Uh -huh. Got some that aren't so noticeable. Where are you going, Kenneth? Oh, I'm just going into town to fool around a little. Maybe go to the carnival. You'd be better off to save the mules. And save yourself. Well, I'm not going to be long. Besides, I'm not going to take those mules anyway. I dream about everything. Like last night, I dreamt about frogs. That was awful. <laughs> uh, what's so awful about frogs? I don't know. It just was, that's all. One time I dreamt about flowers. One time I dreamt about when I was grown up. Hey, what do you mean, when? Now, what do you think you're supposed to be now? But Ed says that... Anyway, who cares? Let's talk about something else. All right. Uh... What do you 
like best. Stuff that tastes sweet or stuff that tastes sour. Hmm? Yeah. Sweet. Well, uh, I'm going to get me some razor shells on the beach tomorrow. They're like clams. You have to have a bucket, though. They're kind of sweet. There's a wash bucket I could use. Okay. I'll meet you on the beach at 8 o'clock. That is, if he lets you. Yeah? You said I was grown up. All right. Well... Well, then... Thanks for change. I want you to know that I really and truly appreciate it. Well, your sister's no chore, sister. Mr. Wilson. If... Yeah. Yeah, I guess she told you the whole thing. I'm supposed to be her brother, and uh, we're supposed to be headed for St. Pete to see some aunt and so forth and so forth. Yeah, well, uh, I guess it isn't her fault because, you see, she's sick. She's uh, got kind of a weakness. Uh, with men, that is. Every place we've been, it's the same all over. Somebody gets a spark and somebody winds up getting burned. But I guess as long as you know what to do when she has uh, spells, I guess that's a spell? Well, nothing serious, just fits and shouts, nothing violent. But no great harm done, so... Just, you know, when she has... Uh, something happens to her, she's got a little bottle of pills that she carries around in her bag, and if you just remember that we... Yeah. Now listen here, Mr. Wilson. I know what you're trying to do, but don't give me any stories. to for his own good, because I want to stay here now. And the only way I can is if I chase trouble before it chases me. Marge? 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 You don't understand, Marge. Marge? You don't understand! Uh, yes, I know Mrs. McC McCollum, yes. Uh, four o'clock. Well, I know we prom promised to have it there, but, well, as a matter of fact, my uh, mechanic hasn't shown up this morning yet. I thought we agreed you were going to stay home, Emily. Well, I changed my plan. Well, I don't care what your plans were. You're going to stay here. I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to the beach and take clams like we planned. Now, Emily, I'm not going to stand around arguing with you all day. I've got to get back to work. Now, you're going to stay here or I'm going to lock you in. I'm not going to stay here. Now, Emily, you're going to stay here and you're going to behave yourself. Those kids are worthless. I didn't even check out your block. My block come in? Yeah. Where? It's in the crate in the garage. Oh, hey, I want to talk to you about something. Okay. I'm going to check you out in the cash box. Now, so stick around, huh? I promised yeah. Annabelle I'd surprise her for a couple as of days. As soon as I get the car fixed, I got to take off. Huh? You what? Maybe somebody should say something. For instance? Well, I don't know anything. Oh, no, my friends. Family quarrels are the best kind to keep your nose out of. I heard she's been all around town playing the weight machines like there were slot machines. 
And over at the schoolyard. Hey! trying to boss you around. It's just that I'm, I'm all alone here. You've made a lot of extra work for me. Don't worry about the furniture. I can pay for it. I can get a job. I can do a lot of things. Well, if you're, if you're really serious about working, I mean, maybe, maybe you and I could work something out over at the restaurant. You mean working for you? Mm-hmm. No, you're just saying that. He told you to. Now listen, Emily. Please. I don't want to listen to you. Go away. And don't call me Emily either. Only my very special friends can call me Emily. What would you say if I told you I'd like to be a very special friend of yours? You can't. Now your brother didn't mean any harm. He loves you very much. As far as the work is concerned, he didn't say a word about it. That's my idea. I need the help. You could wait on tables, take care of the customers. You mean... You mean I could be a waitress? Mm-hmm. Well, well, could I have a, a uniform and, and wait on customers? Mm -hmm. See, I used to have waitresses a long time ago, and so I have some uniforms. I'm sure I could find something that would be just perfect for you. Okay. I'd like that. Yes, I'd really like that. Does it have an apron? Yes, Emily, it has an apron. I'll go, I'll go get one fresh enough and bring it right back and we'll get to work, okay? Okay. Then later on we'll figure out your pay. Okay? All right. What color is it? It's blue. I look nice in blue. Can you hear it? Huh? Can you hear it? How about that? Ain't that something? Huh? Oh, Annabelle's gonna, gonna explode when she sees this. I know her, you know, she's sentimental about things like that. Little new surprises, you know. Except that how am I gonna give it to her if you don't change her mind? I can't figure you out, Wilson. <clears throat> Some guys know when they got it made. You give me the time just two days. Two days. I offer to check you out of the cash box and leave you on your own. And I'm offering a better deal than what I offered Johnny. Huh? Well, don't you like the town? Don't you like the town? Yeah, I like the town. Well, then what? Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Corey. My, you look beautiful this morning. Just beautiful. Well, my goodness, thank you. To what do I owe the honor of this special oh, visit? Oh, 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 is that any way to speak to a neighbor? Uh-huh. It's a rare chance I get to have a cup of coffee in the middle of the morning. But now that I have a responsible assistant, why, I can just, just take off without worrying. So, I'll have a cup of coffee, cream, sugar. You know, this Wilson is a very interesting fellow. He's a good man. He's a good mechanic. Of course, he isn't the most sociable guy in the world, but I guess he could grow on you, huh? I was thinking that he, uh, could really amount to something around here if he just made up his mind to settle down. Too bad he's leaving. Oh, he is leaving? Huh? Yeah, he's working on that car of his now, like, like it wasn't going to keep or something. Figures to be out of here by noon tomorrow. Boy, I'm sure going to hate to see him go. Well, here I am. Emily, you look adorable. Well, thank you. 
Thank you. Now, wait a minute. Here, first off, take this rag and go clean up all the tables for me. Would you do that? Okay. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Boy, I'm sure going to hate to see Eddie go. Looks like uh, somebody money that hasn't heard the good news yet. I don't guess that Eddie will get lonesome, though. you are leaving and I can't stay, why, um, I thought we all might want to sort of celebrate tonight. Marjorie hasn't had any attention paid to her for quite a long time now. And I'm sure your little sister wouldn't mind. You don't listen to a word I say, Eddie. If you just once put your mind on something that really is serious, why, you learn to like what this town has to offer. It's got some pretty good things to offer. <coughs> Put some clothes on.
sure know better what to do about my sister than I do, don't you? I'm... I'm sorry. I only thought it'd be worth a try if I... If you what? What if I gave Emily some feeling of importance, something to do with herself? Like that job, I mean. I think she has to be made to feel she belongs someplace. In your restaurant with that uniform with a bunch of guys pulling over? Don't be silly. Wait a minute. I didn't know what she was going to do with that uniform. I said I was sorry. I only thought... You only thought what? I think this is a lot better than what you're doing. Dragging her from one town to another, one trouble after another. Did I ask you to do anything? No, nobody asked me to do anything. Then will you just stay out of it? No, I won't. You know, I think you're all wrong about Emily. What she needs is... is a home and love, the kind of love a child needs to grow on. She... she has to be made to feel that she can just live in this world just like it is. You seem to think you can give her everything you want. Well, I'm telling you, it's not enough. And besides, I'm... I'm not going to stand by. I'm not going to let you keep running. You ruin her. Well, what does that have to do with you? Because I'm... Because you're what? Because I'm in love with you. That's... That's what. <laughs> I love you, Marge. Going to see that girl? Now, Granny, she's a nice girl. She's trouble. I can smell it. The walking wrath of God. You can't smell it. And you can't see it. You don't even know what you're talking about. Where are you going? I'm going away. Well, what do your brother say? I don't care. I'm going away, where you'll never find me. What happened? Something. He's mean. Well, where are you going to stay? Someplace. But I'm not going to stay with him anymore. Tell you what, there's a place over by the cliff, a cave. You could stay there tonight. Now you can't go no place now anyway. And maybe tomorrow. 
Well, I could fix it up so you could sleep. A cave? If you wait right here, I'll go back and get you a blanket. All right. Now, it won't be long. Now, you wait right here. because my boyfriend's going to be waiting oh, for me. Oh, is that me. so, huh? Mm-hmm. He's going to meet me right over there. Is that right? So, if it's going to take too long... Oh, no, 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 just a couple of minutes. You can leave your things here. Oh, I just love to get presents. My brother Ed always says that... But I don't have to do what he says anymore. Oh, you don't? Well, that's fine. Do you want to come with me? Okay. The difference between you and me, Skinner, is I'm not just any kind of a fool. All right, Esmeralda. Tell us about it again. Just like I told you before, Sheriff, I was coming home from my day off. When I opened the door, I found that man bending over Mr. Corey, holding that knife in his hand and looking at me with the wire look like he might start coming from me. So I just closed the door and locked it and calling you, Sheriff, just like I said. Mr. Wilson? Just type out the details. I'm sign whatever you put down. Well, it seems to me that so far you're the only one that's got any of the details. She found me unresponsible. Whoever was responsible almost was. What I mean is, he's got a bunch of nicks and cuts. The one that did the real damage was a nasty crack on the back of the skull. Could have gotten it fallen down. You see, he was slashed at. Something a child might do. 
or somebody not really meaning anything major. By the way, it happened at 755. That's not medical detection. His watch is busted. Sheriff. What is this? You'll have to wait a minute, Marsh. You can't do this. Doc, will you give them something to shut them up? Like they say in the detective stories, we've got to get the evidence. Ah. Your weight is 113 pounds. Be prepared for a sudden change that may influence your... Can't read the rest, there's too much blood. How much did you say you weighed, Mr. Wilson? Audrey, do me a favor, read this, will you? My eyes are a little strained. August 11th, Nashville, Tennessee. Police today released Miss Emily Wilson to her brother's custody after dropping assault and battery charges stemming from Miss Wilson's alleged attack on L.L. Rawlings, owner of the Wonderland Bookshop on Snow Street. The charges were dropped when it was learned that Miss Wilson was a mentally retarded. not a preacher. And a law enforcement officer's got to take sort of a straightforward view of things. So now I think we'd better go and talk with your sister. <laughs> 